Hi folks, uh, welcome back again to uh, this series of videos. In this uh, video, what we'll do is we'll bring all the, uh, the uh, prerequisites and setting up the clocks, etc., together, and we'll build uh, a make the project USB enabled. So we'll enable a virtual UART using the CDC device component of Harmony. Um, so uh, with that in mind, let's get to it. So let's uh, make sure that MCC is open so that we can add on these USB components. There we go. And you'll notice here we've got some more components. Before we just had peripherals, uh, but now we've got stuff like USB device stack, uh, and a number of other options, including core, you may remember, and system services, which you'll be taking some use of. So um, with that in mind, um, let's add a CDC function driver. So this is essentially a virtual UART over USB. So it allows you for some other uh, uh, components that it needs. So USB device layer, yes. Core harmony, yes. Not free RTOS, so we do not want free RTOS. That's going to introduce some uh, complexities that uh, aren't particularly welcome at this stage. So we'll say no to that. USB high speed driver, yes. Time component, all good. Okay, so we've added quite a bit of um, bits, quite a bit of stuff here. Um, so let's see what we can what we can do with these. Now, notice this one's uh, a bit of a uh, a problem because it's got red. This is the time service that uh, is used by the the USB um, stack. So we need to add something for this timer. Now this tends to just be the core timer. So if we go into peripherals here, oops, and there it is, core timer, add core timer. Um, I don't know what this Alexandria offline uh, server is. That's something which has started to appear in the last uh, few days. So we'll say, no, we don't want to install the server. So core timer, connect, all good. So we've got that done. Uh, next bit to do is we need to add um, uh, something to say to our driver what the vid and pid is so we're going to be doing a single uh, uart here so for the for the uh, sakes of this what we'll do is we'll use the cdc comport single demo which is the out one of the out of the box demos that uh, microchip have so we'll pinch their um uh, vid pid for this particular example um so that's that so far uh, next bit to do is we need to have some means of of sending data to the uh, UART, uh, so the virtual UART. Uh, we're not talking about this physical UART, we're talking about the virtual UART that we're going to be doing over uh, USB. So how do we do that? Well, we use the console driver. So we need to find our uh, console uh, driver, which is under system services. There it is, console, here we go. And you'll notice here the console um, driver has a little handle here to plug into USB CDC. So that's a good start. And the next bit I'd like to just add on is also a debug addition to the console. So we can do that by adding this on here. So what that allows us to have an API that um, it, uh, will put on different verbosity levels dependent on so whether it's a warning for information only for debugging whether it's fatal so you can ha when you send messages to the terminal uh, you can change the um, uh, during either in real time or during uh, build um, during the build process uh, what uh, are filtered out what messages going to the debug um, uh, API uh, are filtered through and then go will go out finally through CDC function driver. You'll also notice 
there's a UART handle here. So what you could do is instead of it going to a CDC virtual UART, you could send it to a real UART. So we could have taken this UART and stuck it on here or added one of the uh, uh, five other UARTs in, in this part instead of using a CDC. But for this, we'll just use the CDC driver. OK, um, so that I think is it. Hopefully I've got everything right there. Um, and I'm going to do a generate and hopefully uh, if I have got everything right, everything will be good. Well, we didn't get an error there, I don't think. I've got to clear it again. Let's do another generate, make sure everything's good. See, there's a fair bit more stuff now. Go into the project. Let's do a clean and build. And it built amazingly. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send this off. And is our application still working? Yeah, still flashing. OK. So that's good so far. But what we haven't done or seen is any evidence that it has, it has, actually, has actually done anything to the USB port. So I'm going to open up uh, Device Manager now. And we'll see here. Well, we've got a COM5, which is what was running off of. I'm going to show you in the uh, board here. So this is the uh, this COM5 runs up through the programmer. Uh, but this is our target USB. So what I want to see is whether or not when we plug in our target USB, with a bit of luck. Wow. So I don't know if you saw that, but we now have a new COM port, COM3. Well, that's great. Uh, but um, if I just zoom in a bit here. So it's enumerated. So quite a lot is, is now working here. We've got COM3 is being enumerated. But we're not actually doing anything to send any data to com3 and i haven't even got a um, <coughs> a terminal emulator set up to look at com3 so let us do that i'm not actually sure that setting the uh, bode rate makes any difference <laughs> When it's a virtual COM port, talking to a virtual virtual COM port. Uh, but I'll do it anyway. And we'll just um, stick that to the side there. And we're going to add some code now to send something to the console. So in our source files, something I forgot. It's got an app.c. It's something I forgot when I um, built this uh, project. Um, was something in core that by default it adds um, app.c and app.h. So what I should have done is I should have said no to this generate harmony application files. Otherwise, it's, you just get an additional complication, which is unnecessary uh, in my view. So I'm going to do another generate. Now I've done that. You'll see there they've disappeared. Let's rebuild and send it off. And then there we go. It's all working. So let's go into our main. And we want to send a message off to com3 so there's an as, a, as i mentioned there is an api for this and um it's so we can use sys console print and let's uh, make sure that we know it's uh, from the console oops mistyped that and we'll do it for the same thing So sys console print is like print F, 
um, but um, instead of it going to the stud IO output, which goes to physical UART 6, instead of that, um, it goes to our uh, through the console uh, service and then into the CDC. Um, so let's uh, send that off, write it out. Oh, there we go. So now we've got the physical UART and the console UART. Next bit I'm going to show you is the debug functionality. So um, you'll, you'll remember that in the project graph, we've got this debug thing here. So I can do sys underscore debug print debug. Uh, let's say hello from debug. it nice and simple there um, and you remember that in debug we have a debug uh, level so uh, that's sys error debug so if we go back to our main sys error debug so the first parameter is a debug level that you want this uh, error going to going to so if I so build it again so there we go hello from debug now if I rebuild it so that um, we only get info debug level so remind me because we changed something in harmony we need to do a regenerate and then we need to do a build You see, we only get the console results. So uh, that's how you can globally change what actually gets sent out to your CDC. So do a generate, leave the debugs in there. So you don't actually have to remove your, uh, your debug code at all. You can just do it at a global level here. And uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we do our um, console debug and USB via a virtual CD, USB CDC device. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll have to think about what we do for our next episode. Thanks for watching.